Alright, so today I'll be presenting the Age of Reason and the French Enlightenment. So, in other words, the secular duty we have that we all know, or some of us know. So, the Age of the Secular Lumière, so an introduction. So, it happened during the 17th and 18th century. So, the specific dates between uh, uh, 1685 and 1815. That was when the Secular Lumière really prevailed. So they were considered Enlightenment thinkers, and they were mostly philosophers and scientists that um, participated in the Secular de Lumière. It happened all around Europe, but mostly in Britain and France, where um, these Enlightenment thinkers uh, started um, believing in something other than religion. It first started actually in Italy by a couple of um, friends that started uh, researching into science, but it got more developed in Britain and France, and Italy did not, uh, was not considered a big part of the Cercle de Lumière. Uh, it questioned and went against traditional beliefs. Different types of alignment thinkers that uh, were participating in this uh, era. You had the Libertin de Meur, so the people, the alignment thinkers that cared about manners, and you had Libertin de Pensée, so Enlightenment thinkers as a general. So, first of all, Enlightenment thinkers, or Libertin de Pensée. So, what did they do? You had people such as Descartes, Galileo, Newton, Locke, Voltaire, that believed in science and believed in, um, in uh, they went against the traditional beliefs of, um, of religion. So here, they believed in the evolution of science, the improvement of humanity. They thought that if you follow science, the, there will be a, a whole new generation that would improve our the human the human so the humanity so the social life. They didn't believe in religion. Everything came from a material and not a creator. That was their uh, that's what they thought. So at the beginning, the, since the the pope at the time had supremacy, they said that it was a creator that created everything that happened. But they believed that uh, everything came from material. So the Big Bang, for example. Mostly, these, these Enlightenment thinkers would talk in private uh, rooms, private conversations, since at the time it was considered taboo to talk about that kind of stuff, since, again, the Pope had supremacy, and there was a Catholic that was uh, ordering the, the, the lifestyle. Most popular, it was the most popular at the end of the 18th century, so towards the end of the uh, 1700s. Now we have the Libertin de Marc, or Libertines of Manor. So, what they do, they went against the morals set by religion. So not the beliefs, but the morals that were set by religion. They found amusement in seduction. Mm. So they, instead of thinking about religion, they mostly did not care about what they do. They found that I get to, I can take whatever girl I want and, and I can seduce her and it will be fine. So that was considered like having, let's say, Sex for fun in that century was, was taboo. You, were, you would only have sex to make children, but for them, they found amusement in that selection. Nothing is taboo, that was their motive. And they, cons they, they were considered uh, blasphemy because they, were, they went against religion, they went against the morals set by religion. So they did whatever they want. If they want to go out there and uh, Bang. be naked, for example, they, were, they just wanted to, to have their own freedom. They, they were allowed to do that in their sense, but it was considered blasphemy. Uh, for They first started um, in a famous character in Molière's play, his name is Dom Juan, where he uh, was portrayed as a character that was rebellious and uh, that went against the moral beliefs of Christianity. He was the one that uh, was um, uh, started to consider science as a belief and start saying how religion is not is, is, I guess, a stupid decision that people follow. So yeah, so that was the Secte Lumière. It prevailed a whole new science to the world. So I have both discussion questions now. First of all, how does the novel portray ideas or themes that fall in the beliefs found in the Age of Enlightenment? So what new ideas were prevailed in uh, perfume that were in, that could be considered part of uh, Secte Lumière? Uh, well, maybe not new ideas, but just the fact that the Noid, you didn't really see religion through the Noid as the main character, so there wasn't that focus on it, which normally it would have if it was written yeah. in the 18th century, but since it's no longer. So I guess this 
first sense of rebellion, rebel yeah. I guess, religion. Yeah, I just want to say, like, the way he says God stank of incest at one point and that kind of stuff, like, I think like, knowing himself was sort of influenced, I don't know, if knowingly or unknowingly, by that age of enlightenment and started, like, looking outwards and not just believing in God for everything, he believed in himself. That's the Nazi storyline, and then the fact that he gains followers from it, that will follow like, to his death, basically, from something that's completely wrong. About the, the belief that he's, he's a caveman or whatever, like that whole science? Yeah. Smoke from air. So that's, that's the idea that was portrayed. Yeah. Do you have any yeah. the same thing? Um, I feel like it relates back to yesterday's discussion where we're talking about like if you're choosing Christianity over science and so on. So yeah, I just think that that idea of that conflict that we see in the news sometimes um, is what they're trying to do. Sure. Okay. Oh, just the idea, just the idea of that he's like okay with killing people and he has no limits. Like maybe it's not necessarily like the seduction, but like the fact that he does things without like following a moral or like a logical thinking process of what he's doing. Like not a, a, like, like a thought process yeah. coming from religion, does that yeah. mean so he's allowed to do that, that sort wants. of freedom? He doesn't really have mm -hmm. Um, The idea of that, this whole idea of the seduction idea is an interesting one, and that he so he's had... Next question, I think. Oh. I think, I don't know. I was just going to, I was going to add to this, this whole idea of um, how Pleasure is okay, yeah. and, and I think that is really evident when mm -hmm. Noe is in the cave for seven years. Like he is just <laughs> enjoying like those sensations over and over, purely for his own pleasure, right? And like living it out, imagining that purple kingdom, you know, the purple salon, like all that strangeness that we find, but for him, completely pleasurable. Um, and then lastly, this whole, I think, very blasphemous idea that uh, he is godlike. Yeah, he thinks he is godlike. Right? And a uh, really interesting quote, page 155, he says, he would be the omnipotent god of sense. Like, that is a great quote to say, like, to, to kind of recognize he thinks he's god himself. Maybe not god of the world, but god of omnipotent god of sense. Like, that's he's definitely attributing um, that power that God has to himself. I know something else. All right, next question. So in your opinion, Gunui falls into what type of libertin? So is, it, is he a libertin de vrai? So is he a manner? Does he do uh, his own amusement seduction? Or is he more of an enlightenment thinker where he believes in science, he believes in the evolution that goes against uh, what was said by religion? I think he's more of a divatan than that. So a matter of like yes. manners. In terms of seduction, not necessarily seduce others, but he he falls into the line of being seduced himself back then, seeing that when he smells all the different women, he lets himself get like, carried away into the sense of killing them. And then just kind of thing over to the smoke. Yeah. Instead of saying, oh, the Bible said, you know, don't kill all, oh, then then they'll turn on all the things. That doesn't happen with him, so it's a little bit like that. I feel like we could say both, technically, because like, he is thinking about like, science and things like that. But at the same time, he is definitely like Jacob said, finding pleasure in his own way. So, yeah, I'd say both. And also, it's kind of hard to see that for Inclinui, that he's going against religion since it was never a part of his life. Usually, you would see a bit of conflict in him, but it seems like he, like you talked about, he, he excludes it completely. Like, he wants to be godlike, yeah, but he doesn't have that conflict where he he is uh, introduced to Christianity or religion, so I think that's that's kind of a idea where you can't go against religion if you don't you never believe in it. Yeah, this is the next quote we were talking about yesterday, um, and I yeah, you guys definitely brought up ideas which made me think that. Uh, but really perhaps doesn't believe in like false sciences suggested by Marquis. Um, but he does have his own process, right? Like his process of experimentation is actually quite interesting and follows that of like scientific experimentation, like in terms of that 
the, the scientific method. Like think about how he, um, at the beginning, he wants to purify um, smells of metal and copper and like um, glass. Remember that when he's trying to um, do it through filtration or something like that? And then it doesn't work. And then later he finally understands, okay, I have to get these palmings and he tests it on the dog, like that dead puppy and the sheep and things like that. Like that's all through using the scientific method, right? And and it's kind of it's very cool how he uses that scientific method in um, in perhaps a, a much more realistic and um, accurate sense in comparison to the Marquis who is kind of fibbing and falsifying all of his results. So last question. Would Gunui have made it as far as he did if he was born in a little time, thus before or after the Renaissance of France? So we know that second Jumia happened with the Renaissance of France, so when there was uh, it was before the Rubin, so when there's the new coming, the, the new ideas that came in, so that was the Renaissance. So we like just as like I guess I know that Renaissance created a lot of turbulence during the, the social class, right? So would he have made it as far as he did before the, the Renaissance or after the Renaissance? It doesn't matter, considering. You know, the I have a question. Like, yeah. The second you have, it's like obviously it's, it's a certain time period, right? What happens after? People just go back to the before. Well, there was there was there was after that. I think we talked about that in front. There was second you have, and after there was. Like uh, pre there was there's other there's other eras before, but I think this is the most prominent where science really evolved, uh, really like like expanded like a lot. But after that, obviously the beliefs of science still kept going to this day. Like we study chemistry, some people still believe in, mm -hmm. in uh, scientists when they say this religion. But um, the question is, yeah, if it w if it would have happened before that whole turbulence of social class, before those ideas came out about the Secular de Lumière, would he have made it as far? Um, I don't think he really focuses on what he's doing, he's more just doing it because he wants to. So does he realize that it's part of the Secular de Lumière, like the whole transition period? I don't, I wouldn't say he focuses on that really. Yeah. So. so I feel like it's hard to like take him and put him in a different like, time frame because we don't know how he lived. But this being said, I I think he'd be okay because um, he, as you said, he grew up with the idea of the religion. So technically, even when the science is coming out, he's not questioning anything. He's not like conflicted or anything. So I think that he like it wouldn't affect him as much as we could think. Of. So, okay, I have this, okay, another question. Okay. Well, I think like if it was after the Renaissance and, or the Enlightenment thing, and there was more freedom, then, well, if he made it through the social classes without freedom, then he could have obviously made it through without the, diff the segregation of the different classes. And it, I think, again, as we said yesterday, the whole book just like is about his, his ability and how he uses it to start his life and even end it. So depending, I don't think it depends where or when, he will, would have figured out a way to start his life and end it. So how important was that the author put him in that set? Why Why did he choose that specific setting? That goes with that idea. That, that's what I'm, I guess that goes with that question. So kind of explains why Kuno would have no religion in his life. If he was born before that, then maybe someone would have forced it upon him whether he was um, or not. So then the fact that he has never seen and never heard of it, only from other people's, other people's testimony and other people's similar time, then because he was born in that central, we can, it, it explains why he has so limited, such a limited care for it. Mm -hmm.